All right, we're live. Uh, and I'm looking over here. The camera's over here now. Uh, welcome, everyone, to another Monday night with this thing right in front of my face. Um, you know what? This is, we're basically in the dungeon right now. We're in the basement, which is where my old office was. But this truly is a basement right now. It's unfinished. Uh, you can see behind me is basically nothing. I actually put this light behind me just so there was something. But it, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. It's what I could find in all the stuff that we just moved. It was a crazy move. Um, Meredith is still recovering. I've been fine, of course. You know, nothing affects me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a nightmare this week. But the um, silence was an eye roll. Yeah, it was. It was three days of moving, it's pure moving. Hell. And you know, and that actually includes quite a bit, a few days of bringing stuff here beforehand. It still was a lot, and uh, and then it was going back and cleaning the other house, and and just trying to get this one set up. And anyway, uh, and also. It was great weather that we had when we moved, but it was rainy. So, uh, and we've got dogs and no fence, and you can imagine. So, anyway, it's been nuts. But I'm glad to be back here. Meredith, glad to be back here. Wake me up when it's over. Yeah. So, you can see that's how it's been. <laughs> I've, I've been thinking, I don't know how this is going to go with Meredith today because, uh, yeah, uh, you can't see her right now, but it's not pretty. Well, very pretty, but not happy. Wow. <laughs> not pretty. Not pretty yeah. Okay, what do all these things do? Are you just randomly hitting buttons? Yeah. So Meredith has the uh, the soundboard. That's one thing about the new office is I can kind of set it up now. I know I can't turn it off. You you just press it twice. <laughs> that trombone just gonna keep playing. Oh, you know what? Some of them don't press twice because it don't. It's short. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. I don't, oh, you know what? My microphone's way over here. Can you that sound better? Oh, what a mess. Okay. That should be better. I'm talking oh way across gosh. the room to the At microphone. At least I got the microphone buried in my chest <sighs> here. All right. So today uh, I'm going to be drawing The Thing versus Dr. Doom, and which means that I'm going to be drawing The Thing today and Dr. Doom next week. And I owe Art C and Angela, and uh, I saw he was, he was a little bummed out because he's been waiting Oops. for it. Oops, sorry. Knocking my lights. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> apologies, I, I apologies, Artsy, and it will be uh, yeah very soon. So just when this one's finished. But right now, um, I'm going to start on on uh, the thing. Oh, and by the way, uh, for Henry, here is my um, here's my layout. <coughs> so there you go, that's the layout. <coughs> and so today's going to be a little unusual too. Hopefully my camera's not all screwed up. So much. Um, today's going to be a little unusual too because uh, I've got the thing pointed in, and then uh, Doctor Doom pointed at us. So we're going to see the the thing from behind. So it's going to be. Butt. I'm getting butt. You're getting butt. I, I don't understand. You can draw the thing's butt. Uh, yeah. It's a butt shot. That's thank you. I just want to say you guys don't understand how lucky you are that we are on tonight. Wow. <laughs> Meredith, come on. It's so, you know how many we times could, we've we had this conversation could, where I'm like, you no, can't say yeah. that kind of thing to people because they'll be like, oh, yeah, lucky. Three o'clock today. You couldn't find the camera or the lights. No, I couldn't. I'll say this. Uh, That's lucky. <laughs> it was we're tough. lucky that we are on. <laughs> it was tough. We could not. We, were we are lucky through. we're on. Well, and we're, we're lucky that everyone is here with us, we, oh, right? Sure. Thank tonight, you, Meredith. That's Holy crap. You were fired. <laughs> oh, I'm fired tonight. That's okay. I'm so tired. Like, so, so tired. I'm even talking. We need I to have a vote to ban Meredith. Meredith will ban herself tonight. I'll go to bed. Peace <laughs> out, people. Put all this work into this YouTube stuff. I know. Try and do my best. I got you saying you guys are lucky we're here. That's right. Oh, that's that's a sad trombone moment right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're going to regret that you ever gave me access to the sound effects. Would you put up with somebody saying that to you? No, you would just feel like, OK, I'm out. No, I, you would be. You're part of a family. I put up with people saying all kinds of stuff <laughs> to me all the time. All right. Yeah, that's true. You do. So besides, we're getting thing butt. So, I mean, who's going to leave when they can have thing butt? But uh, thing. Hopefully not too many people. But thing. Um, we have a super chat. Okay. I have to read it. Sure. It's from not 
Jamone for five dollars. Not Jamone says, "How are you guys doing?" Not Jamone. We're live. We are live. <laughs> We're live. Yes. I feel like I said I sat down at the table to dinner. And we're in a small town, so a lot of rest. Like I was, Isaac was like, "Can we have pizza tonight?" I'm like, "Sure, let's have pizza tonight." I've cooked for the last seven meals. I was like, "It was just, it was a Monday." Like Isaac even said, "Now I know how Garfield feels." It, <laughs> it, Mondays. It was a Monday, but you, the problem with a small town is no restaurants are open on Monday. Uh, they must look at it and go, "You know what? Nobody's ordering. I'm going home. So, it ain't worth it." We're we're fine. Look at we're. We're so lucky. Like, we're so yeah. blessed. This is a process. It's not all going to be done in a day. So what you're saying is you'll feel blessed tomorrow. So I'm not. just very tired today. Yeah. Today was a Monday. It's actually, it's kind of nice. Every day is a great. It's I think partly too, I thought I was going to go see my horses today. Like, I'm like, all set. It's been two weeks since I saw the horses. I'm like, I'm going to go see the horses today. They're getting their shots. Yeah. There's literally no point in me going out there today. Because they're all getting shots and you can't do anything with them anyway. So... No going, having fun, playing around. So tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, I'm, I'm glad you'll get to see him tomorrow. So a couple of things I wanted to say also before I we I'm, I'm stuck. go on is, number one, um, member stream on, on Wednesday. I wanted to do one on Sunday, this past Sunday. You couldn't find his camera. Well, it wasn't just that. Couldn't find the camera. But also, uh, the sound in here was so bad um, I could have a conversation with the kids upstairs. You know, we didn't have to raise our voices. So uh, I spent the weekend insulating this whole area, um, which, you know, was actually, it's an easy job. It's just picky. You know, I can kind of still feel it. Dave broke bit. out. Yeah, really bad. Very sensitive. So there was that. Uh, and we got that all done, thankfully. So the sound, uh, hopefully it sounds good. Now that I've got the microphone up to my face, hopefully it sounds better, you know. And um, the other thing, and I want to mention this. I've been talking to Eric, uh, Eric Grove. He's our moderator. You guys all know Eric. Um, I, and Her Henry, yes, I will semi-sketch in Dr. Doom. Um, and he's going to be right here. Basically, like, yeah, his leg's going to be here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my sketch, and I'm just making it bigger, you know? And I'm thinking in terms of really, really blocked in simple shapes because I just want to get the placement basically the same. You can see the legs in the same basic place. My body's in the same basic place. I'm not worrying about anything other than just making sure that uh, everything fits. And then I can make the figure actually work. But uh, I find the easiest way for me to transfer a little sketch like this into something bigger is just, just you know, um, just deal with blocks. Anyway, um, so I've been talking to Eric. And Ariel Olivetti has come out with a new course uh, on oh, painting, acrylic painting. There you go. Okay. Wake me up when you're done. Yeah, I will wake you up when we're done. And uh, so Eric's been experimenting with it a lot. And uh, um, he's got some really good results. I got the course. Um, it's phenomenal. It's actually in Spanish. I want to say Spanish. <laughs> the truth is I'm... I don't know my language, so if it's Portuguese, I really apologize. But I think it's Spanish. Anyway, regardless, I wasn't, it's it's subtitled, so I was kind of more paying attention to that. And I'm dying to try it. Meredith would kill me if I did. So I, I'm kind of bearing that in mind. I, I don't have time. But what I want to do is do a member stream where we uh, play around with it and and try some of his technique uh, techniques. And it's he is a, a, a painter in kind of the Simon Bisley. Um, now, he's his own artist with his own style. So I, I don't want to denigrate him by saying oh he's like this kind of but stylistically for the painting you know the way he puts the paint down it's very similar to the style that i really love the simon bisley glenn fabry that kind of a look and um trying to get in one of those artists to ever really explain the way they do things i've been waiting 20 years so more so anyway i'm very very pumped anyway we're gonna do that soon so that was another thing I want to mention. I really should have put up a link to his video. What I'm going to do in the member section, or not the member section, the just just in the general community section, I'm going to put up a link to his course, which you can get or not get, but also a list of tools that we're going to ultimately use when we do our own paint through. And so you can follow along. I think it's going to be a blast. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm sorry, Meredith. Go ahead. That's right. Next super chat comes from Greg Al, Static Art for $2. Greg says, hey, DNM, hope the move wasn't too stressful. Look. Thank you, Greg. Thank it you, was. Greg. It was. Here's but, what I'm going to say. But we lived. 
we were live. I did not expect it to take three full days. No. But we had a big house. And I think the thing that neither one of us really factored in is the fact that we didn't just move a house. We moved a house and two offices. Can you imagine packing? Like, you don't even think about all the stuff you have at work. But we moved two offices and a house. Do you have your <coughs> phone? <coughs> nope. Okay. I was going to say you could, you know, put it up on, like, wave your phone around the office, but you don't have it. There's mine, but mine's useless. Next time. Next time. All right. Next I'm, time. I'm lucky I brought down a drink and my computer. <laughs> I'm lucky my computer was at 100%. That I remembered at four o'clock today to charge my computer. No, you're not lucky. We're all we're all lucky. We're all no. Well, see, I said I was lucky. I didn't you say did. you're lucky. You did. I'll Why you gotta be that way? So difficult. Always so difficult. I'm too tired for your difficult. We have to have a poll who's difficult. We all know it's you. But anyway. On the stream, I bet you I would win. Anyway, the fact of the matter in is in actual life. We uh, had I am more difficult than in real life. Do you think so? I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know what? Sure. Yes, you are. I'm more high maintenance. You can be. I, I. You know what? I just. But I'm more easygoing too. Yes. Like, so. But anyway, I was getting back to the moving story. We had movers for two days. And it, the third day, we ended up, we thought, oh, we'll be able to finish up whatever's left because it was some stuff in the basement, the garage, the shed. And I was looking around. Plus, the TVs were still on the wall. I'm like, we're not going to get this all in the van. So I rented. I called U-Haul that night, rented a 15-foot truck. We took three trips in that truck, plus a pickup truck, plus a van. And it took us 11 hours to get the last of the stuff out of the house. And then I went back the fourth day with my girlfriend. And we spent four or five hours just cleaning the house. And I'd been cleaning as I went along, but there was so much mud from here that went there. Yeah. <coughs> it was an enormous job. I've never done anything... And if you read my blog, I post on the blog. I was driving, I think it was the second trip back to the house that third day with an empty truck. And I was like, dear Lord, I'm not going to make it. I need your strength. And it was, it was you and I, and it was our friends, two teenage boys. And when I got back to the house, your best friend, Lance, showed up. Yep. And then that, on the third trip... His wife showed up, and then my sister and my dad showed up. And I was like, God sent us angels. Like, it really was an answer to a prayer. I kept, because I prayed, I was like, Lord, I need your strength. I am not going to make it. I cannot do this without your strength. And he gave me strength in the form of people when we needed them. It was perfect. It really was, like, as awful and stressful as this and exhausting as it was, this is a blessing. And it's going to be a blessing and it will continue to be a blessing. I think he needs I to be fine. Just need to get some sleep and feel sane. I need were, order. I need were, order in my chaos. You were better that, yesterday. That was real. I know today I took on big jobs and Isaac was home and yeah. That well, was a stressful there's way to another, start the morning. There's another one that hasn't been adjusting well. Well, he had a he had a bit of a meltdown today, so yeah. it's all right. We all have our moments. We do. So all right. I let's there you go. Now you guys listen to me for Dave talk about art and then <coughs> Meredith complain. I barely did too. <coughs> All right. Maybe actually, you know what? If uh, Eric, if you don't mind, if you just put up a link to um, Ariel Olivetti's course, that would be cool. And by the way, for the record, no, I'm not, you know, associated in any way or whatever. Like there's no, you know, this isn't some kind of, hey, I'll promote your course kind of a deal. This is like, I, I, at all. I gotta all right. read a super chat. Okay. First, next super chat of the night comes from Michael Johnson Curry for four nine nine. Good to see you, Michael. Michael says, been kind of thin on confidence recently. When you started out, what kept you pushing forward, or what helped keep you motivated? Weeks have been rough. LOL. Um, or the week this week's been rough. Oh man, I know that feeling. Um, I think. I have a tendency to start things out really, and I'm sure you guys could relate with this. I start out really, really excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be, you know, this and that. And then reality kind of sets in and it gets really hard. And um, I I went through that with my drawing a bit when I was learning. Uh, it took me two years to get in and um, I wasn't really ready when I got in. It was a, you know, 
uh, I got in as an intern. So um, I got very, very fortunate. But um, I, I went through a period where I just I just wanted to stop. And uh, I think I would have, but my options were nothing. I had no education. I had no ability to sit in a classroom and listen to a teacher. I couldn't handle it. Uh, I still can't. It's so difficult for me to do. It needs to be really kind of hands-on for me, you know. So Rap TV is, sorry if you misspelled Meredith. <laughs> I just saw it on the screen, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, so it was a struggle. And, you know, I got through it because I had to, you know. Um, and then when I broke in, it was worse because uh, the level of talent is just, you can just see just how much better people are than, than you are. And I could see people that were uh, not doing well, not excelling and really struggling. And I could also see that they were better than me, you know, just more talented. I could see it. And that really, you know, I started thinking, okay, where am I gonna land with this? You know, I would look at Brandon Peterson, who uh, if, for those of you aware, he's a Marvel artist. Now he's a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. He actually uses a lot of digital techniques, which are very interesting. At the time it was all traditional, what he was doing. But anyway, uh, he was a, like the, the head lead guy at Top Cow. Well, he was the big guy under Mark Silvestri. He was doing uh, Spawn, Witchblade and, um, you know, some cool stuff and uh, Medieval Spawn. And, um, I was thinking, you know, could I get there? And I just, I was looking at his work and I thought there's, there's no possible way I could um, really get there. Brandon, actually, he was very supportive during that time. Uh, everybody was, it was a good group. Um, Joe Benitez was very supportive, you know, and, um, I, uh, worked through it. I actually, I remember telling Joe Benitez, if I can't get the hang of this in six months, uh, I'm just going to quit and go home. And I don't know how much I meant that. I was just struggling. But when I think, gee, I don't know how much I meant that, then I, I think back to the amount of people that, that did quit because so many people quit. And I say this all the time, but when you're feeling this way, I understand, but also understand that giving into that is why you have so little competition because most people do. So don't let that be you. Just don't quit. You know, you don't have to be the most talented you have to be the most dedicated to study you know uh you can be the most talented and that's great and i would rather be that would be awesome everything would be easier but it does it's not necessary it really isn't uh and you see this with you know some artists will just come on the scene and just be you know head and shoulders above you can just see it's just like magical right out of the gate and that's great when that happens but then you'll see there are other artists that will come along and it's a bit of a slow burn you can just see it get better and better and you know um I'm afraid to name names because I don't want to say, oh, this person is, you know, but I have a few in mind that I'm thinking, you know, this person really started out a little bit shaky and just, you know, eventually they became something really great and it just, it took them time. And that's not a supremely talented artist. I'll tell you that right now. That is a dedicated artist. And in the end, that's what wins. So yeah, uh, work through it, man. It sucks. It happens. You have to expect it. And I, hopefully it helps knowing that you have to expect that it's going to happen. You know, it's my, part of it. My cousin Heather's watching the stream. So I have to give a shout out to my cousin Heather. Oh, that's great. Hey, Heather, poor Heather. I love Heather. Oh, I'm thinking well, of great. you. I know it's been a tough year. Hugs. All right. Daniel Castelli. And then I lost my chat because I was on you. And then I had to switch to me. Does anybody notice if it's better, the stream is better, I think, or internet's better out here? The internet's better. I don't know. I'm sure we haven't dropped any frames, but I haven't actually changed my settings. Because, again, it's been that kind of week. Bigger Drawing says Jim Lee was stiff at first. Um, yeah, you know, well, certainly more stiff than he ultimately got, you know. Um, and I I consider Jim Lee, personally, I think that he is a mixture. Why are you reading questions from the stream? I just look up and I saw I know, it. but I have people who super chatted. Okay, who... well, I'm just going to answer this quickly. No. Yes. <laughs> um, I say no. <laughs> I talk over you. All right. But um, what's this H A? I want I want in like harp. Harp. Is that does it look like harp? Oh my gosh, your handwriting is this your handwriting? It is my handwriting. Your handwriting is atrocious. Yeah, but I'm writing it for me, not for you. Almost illegible. What All are right. you, a doctor or something? Anyway, I think Jim Lee 
is extraordinarily talented, like unusually high level talented, but he's also a student of the medium. And uh, so he's like, he's a mixture, which I mean, the reason why he's head and shoulders above everyone, I think the most successful comic artist ever, uh, the most well known is because of that you know you you put those things together you know talent and dedication and consistency uh and work ethic you know i guess that's dedication but you know yeah all right now i reread daniel castelli's super chat i okay. teased him <clears throat> daniel has a 49 super chat so cool hearing andy park talk about his process and being able to contrast it with your process and the process of other artists process <laughs> yeah thank you so much daniel and that's yeah it really was great it was it was a lot of fun to do um and you know right at the end of wandavision i tried very very hard to get that out uh yuri uh my editor who is the greatest editor in the world um turned that around in record time and it was a tougher one to do because he had some video clips and you know there's a lot to go in there so he got it out as fast as possible but i got it to him very, I've had very time to, i have not had time to watch it it's yeah. terrible yeah, he did we'll get there job. eventually. All right. Next super chat comes from Tomasi Draws for five dollars. Hi DNM. It's Trenton Tier Two worked and will be will there be another review? By the way, M and D makes me feel better because it got laughed at by the whole class. You're the best. Laughed at by the whole class. I don't get it. Do you? No. Okay. We missed that one. I'm sorry. But I'm glad we made you feel better. Yes, absolutely. That's all that matters. That is and all that matters. will there be another review, David? Oh, yes. Yeah, reviews will be coming again. The next one, by the way, uh, the next one on Wednesday is going to be, uh, we're going to be drawing for Zeta. I'm really excited about it. And this is how I learned how to draw, you know, um, largely, uh, not entirely, but I'm going to be doing some sketches from Frazetta and then just trying to do them on my own and uh, having you guys do it with me. And at the end of it, we'll just put up a bunch of people that are following along. We'll put up some of your examples. We'll talk about them a little bit. I think it'd be a blast. Then we will do another review stream. And then uh, Eric and I are going to do a painting uh, stream, which I'm pumped about. So basically what's going to happen is uh, Eric's going to kind of lead us through it. He's been working on this stuff quite a bit on the, the, uh, um, Ariel Olivetti stuff. So um, yeah, I'm putting him on the spot completely right now. But yeah, he's going to be, uh, you know, guiding us through doing a painting. And I, I'll also put up just so we're consistent. And you don't have to do it if you want to do something different. That's fine. But I'm going to put up a. Um, we're going to do Captain America because that's what's in, the, what's in the example. So there you go. All right. Cool. All right. Next super chat comes from. Greg Al oh no I Greg Greg's Leland Gaunt for one pound or one euro. I don't I didn't see a comment though, Leland, so please feel free to uh and in like, the meantime, thank you, Leland. Thank you for the super chat. Yes. Thank you very Spirit much. Spirit retro for five pounds is a super chat. OMG! I forgot it was Monday. Super psyched to join you in arting tonight. Love these streams. In arting. In arting. <laughs> That's great. Arting. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And then super chat from oh, keep hitting Vicus Garg for five dollars. But again, Vicus, I did not see a comment. So tag me or make my name big or something. And and uh, if you have a question or a comment, let us know. And thank you for the super chat. Yes, thank you. And very cool name, Vicky Vicus Vicus Garg. Vicus Garg. Apex Comics for two dollars. I cannot read your super chat, Apex. Because you're asking me to promote a product that is not a part of the stream. And um, you may be new, but I'm just going to reiterate that we will not promote other people's projects on David's stream. So, well, thank you for the super chat for $2. I cannot promote your project on David's stream. Good luck, though. Chris Lavoy has a super chat for $5. Chris says, congratulations on the move. Be strong. Things will get easier. Dave, what's your least fave thing to draw? And Mayor, what's your least fave thing to write? Uh, my least favorite thing to draw is boardroom scenes. By far and away, no contest. I mean, anytime I have to draw a crowd of regular people, some artists thrive on that because they're great at it. I am not. Um, <clears throat> actually, you know, this is a few streams ago, somebody mentioned an artist <laughs> that does really great stuff like that. And I was looking at that 
uh, a while ago and kind of getting something out of it. And so I was enjoying it more. I can't remember the artist again. And actually at the time, I couldn't even remember that I knew the artist. But um, so, yeah, it's I think it's, it's worth pursuing and being better at. I hate it. Boardroom scenes are the worst. And I, I remember I got um, like a 3D program, get the table and the chairs. And I thought, oh, this will make it so much easier. Nope. It actually made it worse. I'm better off just faking it. Because when I fake it, so here's how you draw a boardroom scene. You draw the side of somebody's head massive and you just make it a silhouette. And then you have a couple of people, you know, on the <laughs> cheated as much as I can. I hate those scenes. Sometimes they're necessary. I know. I just, you know, the way that I think boardroom scenes should all be done, Meredith? Jim Lee style, where you have Nick Fury's huge and then other people are just kind of distributed at like computer consoles and stuff all throughout the double page bread. Very cool. cool. All right. And what do you hate to write? Outlines. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Once I have the outline, I pretty much know what I'm doing. Yeah. The outline's the worst because it's a lot of problem solving. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sprawl to Brawl has a super chat for $5. Good to see you guys again. Question. When you go to do the final inking process, do you change up your grip, meaning the finger position for better detail? I don't. This is this is my consistent grip. I um, what I'll say, uh, it's a different pen. And then the the other thing that I really do is I just, I know, and I've said this before, but I'm much better at throwing a line this way than I am at trying to throw a line like this, for instance. And you can see me trying to at least make an attempt to make it, but like I can do it kind of. But yeah, like that line, I was trying to make that clean. You can't even see what I'm doing here. I know. Zoom in. By the way, uh, and apologies. You'll never see Marathon stream again. Why? Because I'm zooming in. And... No, because the camera is totally away. Oh from yeah, you're now. you're like at a different angle. Uh -huh, there we go. Uh -huh. Hopefully, you can see that. I don't, I'm I'm looking at my yeah. Anyway, it's a mess. So that's a big part of it is just following my hand. Um, yeah. Now, uh, I wanted to say. Let me zoom back out here. Um, also, that there's no book of the week this week. Uh, we can't even find the books. Yeah, my books are home boxes. <laughs> so, you know, I have no idea. I would have to basically go through a box. We're lucky just, we found you know, the camera and the lights. Here's the book of the week that I could find. So, I'm not going to do that. We'll just, we'll just do it next week. There you go. All right. Mm, doo -doo 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 -doo. Next super chat comes from Michael Green for $5. Michael says, Watching you draw the thing is cool, but the thing I most want in life is to see you draw any of the black flag characters. Maybe some Monday. Yeah. Black flag characters. I'm so unknowledgeable sometimes. Everyone here knows what that is, don't you? I can't help you. <sighs> I hate when I don't know stuff like that. Clearly, I really should know, you know beings that i do this for a job can't know everything can't know everything yeah. even doctors are have like specialties something i've been i've been kind of thinking about frag is black flag black flag is oh black that's flag. right oh i'm there sorry you go. Yeah, black flag course. dan Frega. oh yeah all right see the problem is that somebody says black flag i'm thinking there's a band it's like a punk yeah. band years and years ago well, that's what somebody else said yeah hopefully dan's doing better dan was in the hospital for a little bit this week nothing really? major Nothing major, but in Fraga was, yeah, nothing oh, major, no. just for like kidney stones. Oh, well, I don't uh, feel like I'm letting anything out of the bag since he posted on Facebook. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure hopefully, fine. hopefully, yeah. he's feeling hopefully he's better. Doing well. I'm not giving away information that everybody isn't privy to. All right, Other Minds has a super chat for $19.61. Other Minds says, Howdy, Dave and Murdith. I read a tragic New York Times article about what top tier animators are being paid in Japan $36,000. In the U.S., they reported sixty-five thousand. This seems outrageous. Is money to be made anymore? Yeah. Okay. And I did see that. Um, I don't know because I'm not in uh, in Japan working. So I mean, total speculation on my part. <coughs> I hear all the time how comics are paying nothing, and it's you can't do it for a living, and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, that can be true, sure, but. Um, for top level people, that is far, far from true. Um, that's just a fact. And my guess, 
I'll tell you right now, yeah, well, you know, it makes a great headline. And I think a lot of people are being deeply underpaid and that's criminal. There are animators, I'll tell you, I don't know this, guarantee there are animators over there making an absolute fortune because they're in indispensable. Because you can't lose some people. That's just the way it's capitalism. It's not always pretty. Uh, it should be more fair. I, some, I don't even want to take, I'm just saying that, you know, that's a broad statement. Yes, there is money to be made. There absolutely is. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I think standard rates have not increased the way that they should over the last, you know, 20 years. Um, it hasn't been following inflation and, and comic artists are deeply underpaid. Uh, at the higher end of the, the business, you do very well. All right. On a positive note, from Jermaine J. Meredith, please pass along this one UFC question to Dave. What do you think about the illegal knee from last Saturday? Peter Yan. Um, I don't know. They called it an intentional knee. It is an intentional knee. I mean, he, he did it. He intended to, but I, I can't imagine. He To me, he looked like he was clearly winning that fight. You know, by the time this was the fourth round, I think, that that happened. Uh, he was in command of that fight. And I think he, apparently his corner said that he should do I, I really don't know. It's craziness. Nothing like that's ever happened. The championship fight, losing the belt based on an illegal knee. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So... So we don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Oh, I, I slept through it. I saw, I, I watched a, a Jail Sonnen video today where he was saying that he, he didn't think that Peter Yan, no, he didn't say Peter Yan doesn't deserve a, a shot at the championship right away, like just to be able to fight again. But uh, that seemed to be the thrust of what he was saying. And I disagree because, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're tired. I mean, no it was knees to the head. It was, oh man, it was egregious. It was like really, it was yeah. beyond, but yeah, so there you go. Yeah. All right. Next super chat comes from Daniel Castelli for 499. Daniel wants to know, have you ever listened to Rob Liefeld's podcast? He's a fan of yours. I don't think he gets enough credit for developing talent. Uh, yeah, I have. I, he's, he's hilarious. I, I've, I've known him for a long, long time now. Uh, he'd actually be a really interesting interview. I think he'd be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. I don't know if he would do it. You know. Oh, he totally would. I think maybe. Yeah, look, he I don't want to. He yeah, he owes you. Yeah, he you does know, owe me actually. That's true. He does. So yeah, maybe he we'll guilt me. him into it. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's and he's always been very very supportive, and you know he gets a lot of uh, um, derision and hate that I think he doesn't deserve. And uh, the fact is that he has a style that people can point out right away and people find it fun and interesting and and just dynamic and exciting and it's fun he's got a style that it vo is evocative of an emotion that's right and that's what it comes down to you it's know? not a, a look at it and go oh that's a nice picture and i i think there's a certain amount of um elitism in tastes and that's i mean it's everywhere it's not just comics like so i, I don't even mean to judge that it's fine it is what it is but I, I don't think Rob deserves the hate that he gets. I think he deserves an enormous amount of respect. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Does he still get hate? Uh, he's, yeah, he's, he really? does, but it, nothing like he used to. I think, yeah. you know, you you hang around long enough, you outlive your critics or outlast, I should say. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> want to get morbid, but yeah. Um, Tagmo Modelworks has a super chat for $5. Tag says, I do feel lucky because I'm not tired and sore. <laughs> 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 seriously i really appreciate all you guys do oh you guys uh thank you tagamo you guys are the best the mad hatton has a super chat for ten dollars oh before i read that Corey says meredith just gets what she wants by guilting people that's true <laughs> yeah it is meredith true. guilts people into doing what she wants i love it i do <laughs> Corey. doesn't work with my own children unfortunately um, they're immune to my guilty ways but <laughs> yeah, mostly i i like i play innocent i'm very good at playing innocent i got people helping us at home depot no problem oh you do it to me too she's like the worst i mean just being like I, I insufferable and then she sticks a lip out and i'm like all right okay fine could you please help me i know how to ask nicely the mad hatton has a super chat for ten dollars Glad I could make another one. Your tutorials have been helping so much. 
Finally started rebuilding my comic collection, starting with Ascension and Aphrodite 9. Oh, well, thank Thanks you very much. Thanks for all you do. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, and another, chat. by the way. What's the harp sound like? I couldn't tell you because I can't hear it. You just keep hitting it. Or is that the first time you hit that one? First time I hit it. Just wanted to hit it. <laughs> That's awesome. We've never heard the harp. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I just hit the rim shot. Is um, or John Jones? Oh, I'm skipping ahead. Oh, sorry, yeah, stop. I'll stop. Um, okay, so now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Next tutorial. I'm working on it on Tuesday. I actually, it was the first comment that I saw on um, the, uh, I, I want to say the Andy Park video. Anyways, I, I think it was the Andy Park video asking um, for a, a video on composition. And I thought that was a really great idea. And I keep thinking, like, what am I going to do next? And you know, I have this idea in my head, like I want to do top 10 things that I wish I knew and because I think it would do really well. But I'm, I'm so torn because I really want to focus my channel on a really good, like more hardcore um, art instruction rather than, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Is that bad? Whatever. Anyway, point being, I'm going to do something on composition. Uh, you know, the not only different shapes and how to use them. Uh, how to frame things also the different emotions that you can get from different panels based on the angles that you choose which is actually something he really focused on in his question so I, anyway i thought it was great i'm going to do that next so there you go oh kevin mandevil says Merith, i think my super chat was lost in the shuffle i might have been kevin because i did a flip between dave and me so if i type to people and i might have lost it just wanted to tell you both that we appreciate what you guys are doing so much and we totally understand how busy you've been Thanks so much, yeah, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, thank you so much. It's nice to get support. <coughs> and you know what? I got to say, I know you're tired and everything. Oh, no, I got it right here. Me. I'm two away from it, Kevin. It was a super chat from 999. Thank you so much for all you guys do on behalf of everyone. We appreciate it and totally understand what you guys have been dealing with. You're the best. And thank you, David, for Thing versus Doom. Oh, thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate Did it. Did have it. And it just hadn't got that far. It's great. Actually, I, I um, I uh, called Eric after, like, we had just moved in. It was like the next day. I called Eric just because I, I felt like I needed to I was like, reconnect with people a little bit. With? Yeah. It, like, it's such a, it's really threw my whole, you yeah, know. You, were, you had a couple of days where it you, was were, tough. You, you were not the nicest person to no. be around. And yeah, getting back on here and seeing all you guys again, you know, um, I, I really have been looking forward to this. Next, yeah. okay, so I can't. I skipped over SCS powerlifting super chat for five dollars. SCS says, Congrats on the move, and glad we get some drawing tonight. Hope all is good. And what's up, flock? <laughs> SCS, we could have used your help this past week. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Although, I tell you what, those movers, man, they've got these straps and they put them over their shoulders and they lifted our piano and our yep. fridge. And yeah, they just over the shoulders the whole way goes. Whoo! And then they just kind of use you your know, legs hold the, for the legs. Just steady it with the arms. Yeah, I could use one of those. Yeah. I got stuck here last Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Um, we weren't in yet. And I, I was here the whole day waiting for the bell. Uh, our internet is through bell uh, to show up. And the guy was great. You know, no complaints. But I was here all day. And I, I've been so busy. I couldn't just sit there. So I ended up having to draw. And uh, yeah so uncomfortable drawing what people are because are, they're still building the house you know they're actually still building the house it's not finished yeah, our house they're still working they're putting up east trough today they yep. started the east trough today and yeah they look at you like what the heck is this guy doing sitting here drawing pictures like you know we're here working this freaking guy is like you don't get no respect no respect that's for sure and uh, we met one of the neighbors she was incredibly nice yeah. you know walking the dogs and uh she asked what i did and i said i'm a comic book artist and she looked at me like, what she and, looked at him like he grew another head and i said a comic book artist she went, oh okay and then she's like oh, okay you know and she kind of changed the subject and i was saying to meredith after we you know we kept walking i said for some people they're like oh that's really cool and then other people they're like oh you sell drugs okay you know pretty much like <laughs> basically just it's not a job yeah all right vicus garg super chat again for five dollars Vicus, if you just like do an at Meredith Finch and just type your question, I will see it because I feel really badly because you've done two super chats for a total of $10 and I don't see a question or a comment. So if you have something you want to say, just tag me like at Meredith Finch and then type your question and Eric will help me out. He'll watch for it too so that I'll see it. 
Rap TV is a super chat for five dollars. Rap says, Dave, will you tell us about a time when you worked with Jim Lee and make it a good story, please? <laughs> okay. Um no, I should say that I have not done a huge... Okay, I got a couple stories. None of them are great. I'm not the best with stories anyway, but um, when I first started, I, I was at Top Cow, which was part of Homage Studios. Homage Studios at the time was uh, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, um, uh, Scott Williams, Will Spatacio, uh, and uh, Travis Tress was there. Uh, J. Scott Campbell was there. And I was drawing layouts on full-size paper just like this. And then transferring them over, and I had this whole thing that you know I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, Jim Lee, story. yeah, he saw me doing that, and uh, he said, "Come with me." And he brought me over to where the photocopy, because they had full size eleven by seventeen photocopy paper, just the cheap stuff. And he said, "Try to lay out on this stuff. This stuff here costs two dollars a sheet, and this is nineteen ninety four. You know, this stuff here costs like a penny." And I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, that was." You know, that was the first time I really talked to Jim Lee. Um, sad. That was a sad trombone moment. <laughs> oh, did you just hit it? Oh, I totally did. <laughs> and uh, I had another one. What was the other one? Oh, no. Kenny Wang says, you've told this story before. Yeah, see, that's the problem. But I never really worked with Jim Lee. Like, I, you know, I, he was he was the publisher over at DC. And, like, I've talked to him a bunch before. And, like, we've hung out at conventions. And he's great. And, you know, but it's not really work stories. So, yeah. Um, I don't have much. And I had one other one. You were afraid. Look, at truth of the matter is, Dave was afraid of Jim for a long time. Yes. You would not talk to him. Any, I still uh, won't talk to him. Okay, let me just say. Any artist that Dave respects, he won't talk to them. Yeah, Olivia so Poipel, I won't talk to. If we have a relationship with them, it's thanks to yours truly. Yeah, it's Arthur true. Arthur Adams, eh, thanks to yours truly. Tim Sale, yours truly. I yep. have not turned the charm on Jim Lee yet. <laughs> just let me know the day. So there was another time. Okay, you got one more Jim Lee story? This is just before your time, Meredith. <coughs> and uh, I think I was working on Avengers, just starting. And uh, Jim Lee called from uh, Wildstorm. And he said, we're having a debate over here. And first I'm like, what? You know, because he would never just call. And uh, he said... Um, I'm saying that I think you're really influenced by uh, making the story so bad because I can't remember the artist. Maybe next week I'll remember. Anyway, there's an artist. You're interested by ABC. Right, whatever artist. And, you know, you're uh, he's a big influence for you. And I was so like, oh, no, it's Jim Lee. I don't want to say no. So I said, yes, he's a big influence. And then I had to actually go and look and find out who the artist was because I was not familiar. Oh my so gosh. I, I was not. But yeah, I totally said that I was influenced. And then I'm thinking, why would I say, why would why I just, wouldn't say, I just say no, you goofball? Yeah, that's you. Oh my gosh. That is you to a T. I know it is. You're still that person. I love you. Yeah. Uh, Claudio, Claudio Rogojan for $5. Claudio, Claudio, I think it is. Random question. How does an artist like Tom Bradstreet get the clean digital look in his art? Tim Bradstreet. Tim, sorry, Tim. I'm tired. Tim. It is, and he does say Tim here. Even though it's on paper, it looks near photorealistic. Um. Okay, now I, I don't know, but it, I'm just going to speculate here, and I, I don't think I'm far off. Uh, Tim Bradstreet, when I see his stuff, it's it's like a it's a very stark black and white contrast. It's a beautiful look, and he's an incredible layout artist too. Like he he just, and this is the thing you can say, well, he's looking at a lot of photos, and he is, but he has to put those photos together. He has to put those compositions together and get the mood. I mean, you know, um, I have a great deal of respect for it. I think what he does is he takes photographs uh, that he's taken, or you know, I, I saw he did a Walking Dead picture, which I thought was very very cool. I think it was, anyway, um, and uh, he ups the contrast, basically does a, um, you can do, with Photoshop, it's a, oh, geez, it's a filter. I, I don't know. Anyway, you lose all of your um, nuance, and you just get basically black and white, and that gives you something that you can really use as a basis, and I think that's my guess of what he does. Cool. Jimmy says that you told him that story, and it was Rudy didn't, D Nebrez? Yeah, Rudy Nebrez. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy's here. Jimmy's. That's Jimmy Reyes. What? Is it Jimmy Reyes? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. 
All right. Daniel Castelli, dollar ninety nine super chat. Daniel says, "Who's your pick, Stipe or John Stipe Jones? Stipe. or John Jones? Stipe. What do I know? Um, or John Jones? I'm picking John Jones because I want to see him win. Is this a UFC thing? Yeah, it's a UFC thing. John Jones. That is That explains why I don't even have to feel bad about okay. not knowing that. That's that's information I don't put in my brain. But do I? I okay. My heart is saying John Jones. My head, honestly, is saying Stipe because John Jones is moving up weight class. That's always a risky thing, as everybody saw with Israel Adesanya. And uh, he hasn't fought in a while, you know? And I've just, like, this year just feels like it's been uh, so many icons of the sport falling. And I, I don't, I hate to see it, but that feels like what's been <laughs> happening. So hopefully not. And hopefully he pulls it out. I, I really want to see him win. I'm definitely prepared for the possibility that he won't. All right. Uh, JP Mothman has a super chat for $5. Good evening, DNM. Question. How far into the head should you draw the eye? I always draw the eye too close to the root of the nose. Love the stream. Too close to the root of the nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take a few guesses here about what you mean. So if I draw a head from three quarters, here's the center line for my head. Here's the near side. <coughs> my nose is going to be here. And so I'm just going to draw my nose. Here we go. There is a, there's a nose. And I'm going to zoom in because it's... Actually, I ended up zooming out pretty far with this one. Like, I lifted my... All right. Okay. And so, um, basically, you've got one eye here, and then you've got the other eye kind of here. And it can be easy to, like, pull this one in way too much uh, and maybe bring this one in too much, and you get the eyes that are too close together. Um, and when it's when you're straightforward, you know, you've got an eye space, a space that's an eye length and then another eye and then two eyes at the outside. And it's very easy to measure. But when you're doing like a three quarter, it's it's more difficult because it really is a bit of a, well, you know, it's a feel thing a little bit. But I'm going to say the easiest way to solve that is to do this kind of a shape for your, a skull. So give yourself something like that. And that gives you your sockets. And I'm going to break up my skull again. Here it is. And so, yeah, just turn to your skull. Uh, you know, yeah, to basically the angle and just, you know, copy those shapes. And uh, then your eyes rest inside uh, basically uh, centered in there. And it makes it actually pretty easy to kind of get them where they should be. And I hope that that answered the question and that's what you were actually asking. Cool. All right. Sketching the beast for five dollars. Hey, Dave and Meredith, hope the move went great. Dave, if you were an independent artist doing fan art, how would you come up with your prices? Um, yeah, that's a it, if if conventions are around, that's kind of easy because all you have to do is just walk up and down the aisles and see what people are people are charging. Uh, right now, it's a little tougher. Um, I I think you could still pretty well research other artists basically just look for uh other artists that are not really working professionally but are doing uh you know stuff um i don't know where you'd sell it is it ebay like i truthfully don't really know now and here's the thing and this is where it's like sometimes my advice is not really the the most useful at all because i work with comic sketch art um and I have a, a list that they manage and they take payment and they do everything and, and I draw the sketches, you know? And so, um, and they also, uh, base my prices, you know? So I didn't even say, I didn't say, you know what, I want to charge this much. They, they basically say, okay, this is what we're looking at for the market. And this is what we think. And they have a lot of experience with, you know, where, where they think a price point is where you're, you're gonna, and, and here's the problem, right? I want the prices to be lower because I don't want to be charging people too much for sketches at the same time. Um, I want to make as much as I can for my work, which I think all of you that are artists, you can relate to that, of course. Right. I mean, you know, it's, uh, 
It's a fact. And um, I put a lot of work into the stuff and I, I can only do so many. And since we're, um, we have more than we can handle still. And I, I think we're in a good place price wise. Like I don't want to keep raising it and say, oh, we still have more than I can draw. So I'm just going to keep raising it. Cause I think there's a point where people will just say, you know what? Heck with you. And when you push people to that point with your prices, uh, you will lose them forever because when people decide that you're just some kind of a mercenary greedy scumbag yeah that's not good you don't want to go there so it's it's like a it, ah it's a challenge it's hard sketching the beast as a follow-up says i always undercharge a lot i'm told people always tell me they'd pay me more money yeah well you should definitely and, charge more and and honestly dave is i think it's very hard for an artist to price their own work well especially you need to have a friend who's familiar with the industry who will help you price your work yeah and, because and, Sorry, go ahead. It, your prices oftentimes are a reflection of your confidence. Yeah. And, and yours, you do that all the time. You're like, if somebody asks for a price for cover and you're like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, yeah. Well, before I met you, Meredith, I, I was giving away covers all the time. I know. And it, it, there were times it was a little frustrating. I would give away a cover and then I'd find out, hey, you know, they'd say, I sold it. You know, I had this bill, whatever I had to sell it. You know, are you kidding me? I just gave you the cover for nothing. And now, you know. Yeah. There was one time that happened where I was like, okay, I understand, you know, uh, you, you know, some things come first, fine. But yeah, there are other times where, I, you know, where it's harsh. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you see, cause I, I've seen it actually before I, I've given, uh, very high value covers, which would be very val high value <laughs> now. And, uh, there they are up for sale. And I'm like, oh, I remember giving that one away and I know who I gave it to. Yeah. But, you know, you give somebody something, that's, that's their right to do it, right? It's my stupidity for devaluing my own work. That's right. Sketching the Beast says his wife is the same with me that I am with you. So there yeah, you go. You need See? that. You need you to have a person in your life. Yeah. Even not a person says, that's why Jim Lee stopped giving away stream sketches every time. Yeah. And I look, you guys can understand where I'm coming from, right? Because I'm sure, like, let's say hypothetically that you want to sketch for me. You look at the price and go, wow, that's, that's not fair. And this guy's being a jerk and his prices are too high. And I understand that, you know, at the same time, though, as artists, as artists, you want to do as well with your work as you can. Also, so also, I, I've seen it on Facebook. There was a quote about somebody asked for a quote for somebody to build a deck. Yeah. And they're like, that seems like a lot of money just to build a deck. But you're not just paying for the deck. You're paying for all the years of experience that that person is, has has gathered yeah you're paying for somebody to not make a dumb mistake and exactly and when people when an artist of your caliber has a price you're paying for your sales record and your years of experience and and the time and the effort that you've put into becoming the master artist that you are so yeah but then it's also uh you know it's a relationship with with people that are fans of what you do and you don't want to I'm not, you know, yeah. the last thing you want to do is make few people feel like you're, no, um, I can't. you're looking at them as like a, you know, you're not though, I'm but not, I wouldn't ask. It's like, if you're a doctor, you don't want to go to somebody's house for dinner and have them asking for free medical advice. If you're a lawyer, you don't want them to ask for free legal advice. Like nobody wants to do their job outside of their job. And the problem is that people don't always think of art as a job. And they don't value and respect it as a job. No, but they, that's the they, job that pays the bills. Yeah, it's it's something nobody ever warned me about drawing. <laughs> now it depends on who you are. Some artists have a very high opinion of themselves, and they I, I think they do a very good job of selling their importance. You know, but if you don't, then yeah, you you it's easy to foster in other people's mind that your job is a joke. And if you want commissions, Eric was just asking where to send, ask for commissions. The commissions are done through Comic Sketch Art. And we're full, aren't we? Yes, we are full right now, but it's www.comicsketchart.com. Yeah, I don't foresee that opening for <laughs> probably another couple of years. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the problem. I could say, hey, now I'm going to raise my prices because it, it's so full, but, and I'm not going to do that, but, you know, yeah. 
Matthew Fuentes says, in the tattoo industry, the saying is, good work ain't cheap, and cheap work ain't good. <laughs> Generally speaking, I mean, it can be. You know, you have an artist that is is more talented than they realize, and it can be. But, you know, that's that's kind of a rarity, and you don't want to be risking that. So, yeah, for sure. All right. It's getting close to nine, which means it's time, since we don't have a book of the week, it's time for Meredith to say, hit that like and subscribe <sighs> button. As I always do after the book of the week anyway. I thought you were going to say, we're not doing a book of the week, so I'm going to launch into some kind of sermon. I'm like, I whoa, can. no, yeah. I can. <laughs> Lessons I've learned from the move. Deep thoughts. By Deep Meredith thoughts. Finch. Mud. Oh, mud. Mud makes so much dust. I dusted my entire house yesterday, and it is covered in a thin film of dust again today. Yeah. I gave up washing my floors today. Most days, I've washed them twice. Today, I'm going to wash them tomorrow. Yeah, there's... there's I a... gave up. What do you do? Exactly. What do I do? Don't move to the country. Well, you know, someday we'll have a lawn and not a pile of mud. We would have this if we lived in the city, even. Yeah, we did. It's, it's... The dogs destroyed the backyard. No, I mean, if we... Built a house in the city, we would have no lawn right now. And no, no fence. Yeah. Like that stuff doesn't come. No. You know. And even in our house in the city, the dogs dug up our lawn. Yeah, they made a mess of it. Jamal Dundas has a super chat for $1.99. Jamal says, Hey guys, you guys rock. Dave, can you do a UFC piece? Actually, that'd be a lot of fun. I'm going to say yes right now. <sighs> I mean, like I'm not doing it right now, but yes. Right, uh, I'm saying that yes, I will do it. I need to figure out what I would want to do. Conor McGregor. Uh, yeah, you know, but he's old, but he's like the he feels like the Tiger Woods of UFC right now. Yeah, honestly, I think if I was gonna, I know his name. Okay, I would probably go with Tony Ferguson. Oh, so there you go. Another what about the one of my Saint Germain. No, Saint Germain is. That oh right? yeah, GSP. Yeah, George Saint Pierre, Saint -Pierre. and he's there Canadian. You so there yeah, you go. Yeah, go with that guy. Actually, that's not a bad choice because he's he's a Canadian. That's right. Gotta support our fellow Canucks. W. B. Hughes has a super chat for one pound. I cannot see a comment though, so I'll keep looking. What I wouldn't want to do with it though is, you know, try and send it to him. Say, look, I drew a picture of you. And no, you know, please don't do that. Yeah. You know, it's embarrassing when they don't care. Captain. Battleship Super Chat for $9.99. Captain Battleship says, I'm glad Ethan Van Skyver recommended this channel. I've been trying to learn as much as I can from your tutorials. In regards to inking, which of your pens do you use to ink your panel borders? Thank um, you, Ethan, for the recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank, thank you, Captain you, Ethan. Battleship for the Super Chat. <coughs> Actually, you know, the, it's fortunate. Oh, I've got it right here. So this is what I use. It is... A Copic multi liner. Now, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. It just so happens these ones here, my Microns, I only have an O1 because that's what I use, and I didn't bother getting any ones because uh, I already had them in these. So I use a one, and that gives me. Um, hey, I got a ruler. Just about this thick. There you go. It's a nice thick panel border. And it's nice and even and consistent, and it's a whole lot easier than trying to do that with a brush, which I have tried to do foolishly. So, yeah. All right. Corey Hudson wants to know for $5, what are your thoughts and advice regarding traditional versus digital drawing approaches? Um, my thought is... Mm, I've kind of gone back and forth. I've done digital, and... Uh, I got a lot out of it. I had a lot of trouble with it too. Um, but I learned a lot actually from talking to Robert Marzullo um, quite a bit and getting some advice on, you know, some, th there are surfaces you can put on top of like an iPad, that kind of thing that will give you more of a drawing feel. Uh, talking to Jay Fabok about his pen sizing. And we actually, I have a, that'll be next, right? Jay Fabok's interview is is next week. Sure. I don't know. Have you sent it to Yuri? I have. I maybe oh, whatever and it's coming up <laughs> very soon anyway he talked quite a bit about his process with uh with 
you know, working on his own stuff digitally. And so I got a lot out of that and I want to try it. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say, I don't think while there are things that you can do quicker digitally, because like, for instance, this guy right now, I could decide, Hey, I want him, you know, twice as big on the page and I could just make him twice as big, but it didn't draw it for me. It's not going to draw it for me. Or even if I do a free transform and, and kind of move things around, I still need to know where to put it. And like, it, it does not make it easier. Uh, you need the same level of talent, you know, people that work digitally, uh, there is no, um, lower amount of talent that you need in order to, to achieve the same result. It just, it's something you can get quicker. And, um, I'm kind of, I'm looking at, you know, maybe, uh, doing some more stuff with that. I keep saying that and, I do want to do some of that stuff for the channel too. The reason I haven't, I'm going to tell you right now, I was planning on doing some stuff with, um, um, clip studio paint, uh, a little bit ago. And I ultimately didn't do it because my Cintiq is so old. I couldn't get it to it's sit in the garage. Now I didn't even bring it down here. Um, it's going in the bin when it's it shows going up. in the bin. It doesn't even work. It's just too old. And and so, yeah, I I, I finally thought, okay, well, uh, I need to get like a proper thing to be able to do it. I don't have a tablet right now. I've been, I told Meredith, oh, I want to get a tablet. And she said, you cannot get one right now because uh, we're moving. And uh, I mean, she's worried about expenses. So there's that, but also uh, just for, you know, in terms of the address, we don't want it sent to the old house. It's the people that moved into our old house uh it may not give us our mail you never know so so i have to read this okay comic book kid says am i the only person that goes on live streams just to say hi to your favorite artist but then they never say hi back oh hi but you have to be fair comic book kid dave has got his head down drawing yeah. and there's a lot of chats going on so it's not that people are deliberately trying to ignore you we just may not always see your comments because the chat goes by pretty quickly there's it a lot does. of people on there and let me just say um that I, I watch these. And so I, I see your comments, you know, even if it, when I miss it, like I saw somebody said that we were disrespecting the super chatters somehow. And so he's out. I saw that. Oh, no, that's back. because I didn't read a super chat because his super chat was promoting his own personal comic. Uh, and he wanted me to read something about something he was promoting on Indiegogo. Uh, oh, I see. And I said I wasn't going to read that. And that's uh, fine. If he doesn't want to super chat anymore, because I've said multiple times in multiple streams. I don't know. Okay. I, I hear I'm you. I'm not okay. going to read. I didn't know what that was chat. about. And I thought, oh no, you know, but I didn't say anything, but I, I saw it. So yes. yeah, there you go. All right. There you go. Yeah. Look, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, yeah, I'm we've not, been trying no. to be clear about that. Basically, here's what it comes down to. I could spend all night. People I want to be to able to, stuff. I want to be able to promote other people's work, stuff that I'm excited about. For instance, Jimmy Reyes. Uh, page one comics, check out his, um, uh, Gumroad page for some great brushes. They're phenomenal, which, uh, as soon as I manage to get my tablet and get underway, I'm going to be using, uh, Jazz Singh is using them. I mention them all the time because they are really great and he gets phenomenal results out of them. It looks like traditional inks, traditional, like Scott Williams, you know, kind of, uh, quality stuff. And so, yeah, uh, and I'm happy to promote stuff, but what I don't like is, is, you know, it's like I don't know, people putting words in my mouth, you know, when that happens. And uh, yeah, it's not fair. All right. Um, Justin Jones joins, I think it's J-O-I-N-E-S. So I don't think it's Jones, it's Joins. Has a super chat for $5. Justin says, I finally made it to another live stream. Hope you're enjoying the new house. Thank you, Meredith and Dave, for taking time each week to spend with fans. Yes, thank, thank so much, you very Justin. much. We're glad to be here. Yeah. Although I did, I, I have had a few days where I had like a little bit of a pang. A like pang. I'm excited about this house. Oh, but you miss the old one. But we had, the, the old house was a great house. And well, I've talked about. This is why I wanted to, you know, here, watch this. Oh, this is going to be upset. Yeah, I'm going to flip this and I'm going to lift the camera so you can see the disaster we're dealing with here. Okay, so I got it flipped. Let me zoom out. Yeah, it's an unfinished basement. So here you go. I mean, 
it's a disaster in here. It's it is what it is. But yeah, it'll get there. Um, I'm gonna be putting walls in and <coughs> finishing it and doing it all, uh, you know, up properly. But yeah, certainly right now, it's not nice. Now let me see if I can get my camera situated again. It's always a thing when I. Right. Hold on. I know. Go ahead. I can I do a super chat yeah. while you're yeah, fixing you yourself. Rike Inglés, one, two, three, is a super chat for five euros. Rike says, "Hey, DNM, got here late, but it's so great to see you again. Missed the flock last Monday. Hope the move is good. A nice dungeon. Hashtag keyframes. <laughs> Hashtag what? Keyframes. I don't get it. That was from the Andy Park video. Remember when he was like the keyframes? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Somebody watch the Andy Park interview. Romeo Azar has a super chat for four nine nine. Romeo says, "Have you ever considered doing a Monday Night Draw Batman versus Superman, but with Michael Keaton's Batman and Christopher Reeves Superman?" <laughs> Batman and Superman would be a lot of fun. I want to say right now, oh yeah, I would love to do that. I would not love to do that, truthfully. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I hate doing likenesses. It's true. It's they're hard to do. They're hard to do. I generally when I do likenesses, I trace it. Mm -hmm. I remember I had to do uh Dick Cheney in Ultimate X-Men years and years ago, back when he was the vice president of the United States. And uh this is before I figured out to just trace it, you know. Yeah. Oh, and no. every time his face would appear on the panel, I'd be like, "Oh no." Trying to make it work. You'd be like so there's this if you ever see my ultimate x-men stuff you can flip through and find it's in the first two issues it was written by mark millar and uh yeah you can find like a marshmallow dick cheney hey F fill me in what does the harp sound like you're asking me to fill you in yeah have so, you ever, what does the harp sound like um i don't like a harp why like and like angel music sure basically okay Next super chat come because like, there's never gonna be a time where that's you want me be to imitate verbally a harp. Yeah, for you? well, you can't sing Twinkle Twinkle on tune, so no. I just want to... <laughs> Black Tiger 001 as a super chat for five dollars. Black Tiger says, "Question for Meredith: How do you promote a story you want to tell without giving away the story? I tend to go spoiler crazy when pitching to friends. It's a that is honestly, it's a really tough thing." Um, because if you have a special twist and otherwise like when you're just pitching stories they all like it's hard to not have a story sound generic it is and i think you have to kind of not worry about that too much because take it, the risk because here's what i'm going to say ultimately there's been like a thousand fairy tales written that follow the same general you know yeah Plot, yeah, the quality isn't. They're all different. The quality isn't always in the originality. The right. quality is very much in the execution. Right. So yeah, what you, what you want to do is establish your who your protagonist is, what your world is, who your villain is, what they're up against. Leave it. I at think that. also, what's the point? Don't fill in the details. Fill in the point. Like why? Focus more on why your story is important. Versus, like, when you're pitching it, who it's going to be, who's going to be excited by it, why it's important. And don't write OP characters. What's an OP? Overpowered characters. Oh. Like, don't write a character that is the greatest at absolutely everything and, you know, everybody loves them right away and they don't have to fight for anything. That's a sure fire <laughs> way to make something that nobody <clears throat> likes. Totally off topic because it's not what he asked at all. I'm no. sorry. But clearly, you have a problem with overpowered characters. Well, I was watching uh, Airbender, and I just thought, you know. Oh yeah, the, Isaac's been watching Airbender, and you really liked it. Yeah, what is Airbender There's... with? Um, it's the and Legend the... of Korra. Oh yeah, you really liked it. Korra, Legend yeah. of Korra. All right, that's all we're gonna say. The Mad Hatton has a super chat for five dollars. Any tips on designing manga cyberpunk armor? For a minute there, my tired tongue could, almost couldn't say that. Manga or cyberpunk armor. And welcome hockey back to the Finch Flock tier two. Hockey says his 
his subscription expired, so he's back in the flock. Well, thank you, Hockey. Um, uh, shoot. <sighs> trying to think, you know, how to answer that. Um, first of all, you have to look at reference, you know? Um, I'm not going to talk about manga because I don't really do that. But what I will say is, um, let's say I'm going to draw, here's a leg. And I want to have like the top of a knee pad here. And, you know, maybe a piece here. I'll give it some, you know, these kinds of circles. And here's a piece below it. And, you know, you want to layer it, make it more interesting. And here's the, the lower leg. And uh, let me actually go to, because I, I can't see. I want to make sure I'm on the screen. Yeah, I'm on the screen. All right. And so it comes down to layering. So I've got a shadow under here that casts over the piece below it. Shadow under these. This casts a shadow onto the piece below this. Oh, guess who's here? And then, you know, this is kind of turning down. And I, I can touch. just start going into um, different textures. I, by the way, I did a, a video on this, on uh, texturing armor um, that went really all into this kind of thing. As far as designing goes, uh, look, I, I want to do some stuff on designing. I will. This is not, I can't do it here. And I'm so sorry. I wish I could say, oh, this is what you, you know, uh, I can't. It, it, First of all, I need to think about it a little bit, and also it would just it'd take a long time. But thank you so much, and I'm sorry that I didn't have a better answer. Patches is in the house. So you just put the music on. I put the intro music on for Patches because introducing the cat. I That's saw somebody in in like another comment saying that they're sick of the cat. Nobody said. Nobody that. said that. Nobody said that. Patches hasn't even been here yet. People want to know she's here. She caught a mouse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's you what know what happens when you build your house in the middle of a field? I really actually should not be downing the cat. The cat yeah, actually the caught cat a mouse. Caught a mouse. She is declawed. Caught a, mo caught a mouse. That's pretty impressive. cat. Caught a mouse. Pretty good. And then I caught the second one. She's Jimmy Pennington. Welcome to the Finch Flock. All right. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Welcome. And Foo Bear has a super chat for $10. Foo Bear says, any stories or opinions on the legend Chuck Dixon. Um, I've never met him, so uh, no. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I've, I've never met him. I mean, I've read some of his his Batman stuff. You know, he's a he's a great writer. He's written a, a lot of really good stuff. Um, but you know, from a a personal, um, yeah, I've I've never met him. So apologies. Nancy Boyer says, "Mary, you gave me great advice at Fan Expo. You said." Make sure to help people realize why I'm interested in the character and what the real life struggles are. So when you're pitching it, that's what you want. Why you why the, why you care about it? Why anybody should care about it? Vegas Dave has an upgraded membership to the Finch Flock tier. <coughs> Thank you. So Vegas much. Dave said he was going to fall asleep. He is still here, and it's nine thirteen. Well, there you go. I guess he was I, excited because patches came down. I told him I would just have him yell. I have you yell a bunch. When it gets late. Indie Comics Cast has a super chat for four and I'm just ignoring you at this point. <laughs> Love how your thing art, the word art is important in this sentence. The way you use muscle points to focus the heavy shadow render makes sense, Joe. Well, thank you very much. It's always a, I've struggled with the thing a little bit because I want to have anatomy, but I also, it, by the way, it'll look better once I, like it's roughed in a little bit right now. It'll be better, but yeah, I, I want it to be anatomical, but then I also want it to be rock, and I don't want the anatomy to overpower that. And where that line is, I don't really know. And I've seen artists like Arthur Adams really goes for more simple, and it's not simple. I mean, his stuff is incredibly detailed, and you know, uh, but I mean, in terms of his shapes, he goes for broader, bigger, bulkier, just you know, shapes. And I love how that looks, but I can't pull that off. So. Right. Wayne Blackman has a super chat for $10. Wayne says, hey, guys, congratulations on your move. I'd like to recommend the book Kill or Be Killed Deluxe Edition by Edward Baker and John Phillips. Great story. There you go. 
Oh, yeah. I appreciate everything you guys do. And I remember, oh, and yes, thank you very much. I remember when Ed Brubaker first got to Marvel and, you know, he was, because I, I think he was at um, uh, CrossGen. And uh, yeah, he just, or no, uh, Ed, oh, man. Ed Brubaker's a writer. I'm thinking of the, uh, the artist that did uh, Winter Soldier. And now I'm not going to remind me, you know, and him I do know. Oh, Ed Brubaker's a writer. And actually, I know Ed Brubaker, too. <laughs> That's the worst part. Um, I haven't. We're tired. Yeah. I haven't seen Ed Brubaker in many years. It's been a long time. But when he was doing a lot of Marvel stuff and I was working with Bendis, uh, we had a lot of dinners together and that kind of thing. And yeah, he was, he was very funny. <laughs> Ed Brubaker, actually, more than anyone, got me to start. By, like I bought um, uh, <sighs> again with my memory I, I bought old a lot of old movies that are classics that I had never seen because he had such a like a broad under like he, he had such a great pop culture frame of reference like you know he could just go on about all that stuff and about like you know literature and all this kind of thing and I'd be sitting there while we're eating going no I, like I couldn't keep up and so I I uh, was trying to broaden my horizons. Vikasgarg <coughs> has a couple of comments, <coughs> which I'm going to read. Because if you remember, he super chatted. Yes, I know. Yeah. I love how you're adding shadows and rim light. There's a ton of detail. Well, thank you very much, Vikas. And then, um, the next super chat comes from Chow Win for $10. Hi, Dave and Meredith. Congratulations on the move. Thank you, you very see much. A modernized Adam West Batman with patches as Robin. You guys rock as always. <laughs> a modernized Adam West Batman with patches, patches as Robin. What are you guys doing to me? <laughs> see, patches <laughs> comes. Everybody loves her. Yeah, she's hanging around more here. She likes it more down here for some reason. She's looking for mice. Maybe. Well, and no wonder there are mice in here. They didn't seal up the basement windows until a month ago. Yeah, the basement was, and they had the furnace on, and yeah. the basement windows wide open. They had electric heaters running. I paid that nine hundred dollar electric bill. Yeah, and uh, the basement windows weren't even sealed. Like yeah. there were like two inch gaps around the windows. It was Jamal. It's a beautiful house. It owned it. Yeah, we love it. It's well built. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel like we're, you know. Being we're a little tired bit tired right now, people. Yeah. It actually is incredibly well built, so you know. Yeah. And we brought up like I think the, they had moved upstairs. You know, it looked things. I think they just forgot. Right, and so we mentioned it. They did it right away. I mean, yeah. But that's why I think we got a few mice. Jamal Dundas has a super chat for four nine nine. Jamal says, "Dave, I'm going to hold you to the UFC piece. I love GSC, GSP. GS so I'm excited. LOL. Meredith, great job as usual handling the chat. Have to go later." Thanks, uh, Jamal. Yeah, thank you, Jamal. And uh, yeah, so I'm doing it. I want to say next week, but next week's going to be the other half of this one. Um, and then Angela. we'll be Angela Artsy. I won't forget. I know I won't forget this time. I come down my foot. Yeah. Yeah. She was upset when she found out I was doing this, but you knew I wanted to do this one. Somebody mentioned this like a, a while ago and I thought, oh, be a lot of fun it's actually turning out really different than i expected than i was kind of thinking i don't know if this was a mistake <sighs> all i know is that at 10 o'clock meredith's peace now actually i think we should be good i, I think we're gonna be fine. <laughs> you because you said you're gonna peace out and then nope, you hit the lock for yourself button. you hit the lock <laughs> Sheldon Martin. Oh, the stream now that Meredith has control of the Amazon. I'm going to add some class. $10 super chat. Finch Bam from Sheldon. Thanks again for doing portfolio reviews, Dave. Every year I would save up to go to a big con just to get my portfolio looked at. So thank. Oh, pardon me. So thanks for saving me some moolah. <laughs> well, thank you. And yeah, thanks for coming by last time. It was, uh, it was great to look at your work and, and talk to you again. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing it again soon. And um, I, hopefully you'll be there for Wednesday, two days from now, Wednesday, um, when we uh, study for Zeta. I, what I really want to see, I'm going to do a bunch of different sketches. And then, yeah, the idea is to draw something that, you know, maybe 
is not really in my visual vocabulary and see if by the end of the night I can kind of, you know, make it mine. So. Next super chat comes from Andre Malcolm Tattoo for $19.99. Hey, Andre. Andre says, Dave, are you going to do more digital art and post them as NFTs? I think it's a better investment for you in the long run. I don't know much about it. Now, I will say this. I have, no Marvel stuff is approved. No yet. Marvel. So, yes, I saw that. No Marvel stuff is approved. Fact, so they've actually said you cannot use Marvel. Stuff. Right. Um, but just in general, I know my uh, art dealer is looking like he wanted to talk about it. And I think we're going to talk about it. I don't really understand it. So. Sean Phillips is the artist. Sean Phillips is, is the artist. You were talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The NFTs we don't really understand. So we'll have to get more information. And I'm just waiting if Marvel won't let people do it. How long till DC won't let people do it? Uh, look, I just don't know. So, you know, I, no comment on it. I just don't, I don't know. Sith Lord Waldorf has a super chat for $5. Love your stream, Dave and Meredith. Dave, do you ever draw mech or Transformers characters? With the constant shapes and lines seem annoying to you. Um, I, I do when I have to, you know. And actually, I can really enjoy them, especially once once I've got all the mech kind of drawn in, which is not hard, it's just time consuming. Then I actually really enjoy a lot of the detail and it's fun. Um, I, I'd like to do something like that for the live stream at some point. And, um, you know, I haven't done Iron Man. And, you know, so maybe at some point, yeah, that would be, that'd be good to do. I should really schedule that. I struggle with that stuff, though, just because, like, with this, this has anatomy that I can relate to and I understand. And uh, so, yeah, um, whereas, like, an Iron Man or any character like that, I basically have to go shape by shape and just, you know, piece it together from reference. And I don't enjoy using reference when I can avoid it, for sure. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Hockey says, Meredith, I clicked the like button just as you pressed the laugh track. So it seemed like people were laughing at my choice. <laughs> uh, um, I, mean, I laugh at Dave all the time, but probably different reasons. Yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I'm hoping also for, for next week, I'd like to get, um, because we have such, hey, focus, oops, shoot, dang it, keep doing that, this one. Um, oh, apparently I drifted away from my mic. Were people saying that? Yeah. Nobody was complaining though. No, people were complaining because they couldn't hear me. Also, I'm losing my energy to project my voice. Yeah, you do sound a little, you know, tired. It's been a busy two weeks. I am out of these pens. And so this one's actually a little dull, but I'm kind of stuck with it. I need to get some more. Oh, Robert Marzullo is here. Oh, yeah? Robert says, uh, and I see this, as he's leaving, saying goodnight. See what? you next week. <laughs> oh, I, well, hopefully is isn't. Robert, if you haven't left, thank you for coming by. Uh, we got to talk this week. Um, yeah, it's been crazy. So you know, so I talked to I talked to Robert. We talked for a while uh, on the phone. Uh, well, two weeks ago now, and and uh, then the the move happened. So, but yeah, thank you for coming by. It's it's been a little while since we've had Robert here. Hi. All right, Claudio Rogojan. Claudio says for $5, completely off topic, but are you guys going to watch the Justice League Snyder Cut? I honestly don't know what it's going to be like. How long is it? Um, I, is it like three and a half hours? It's long, and we're going to watch it, yeah, for sure. Look, we may have to take it in shifts. We'll take it, yeah. We're not going to watch Meredith it all at once. can't stay awake that long. That's And that's really what it comes down to. We actually I have one episode left of One Division still. We've been like... I fell asleep during the last one. Yeah, you did. Well, yeah. I was so tired. And that was, so that was I'm, a good I'm kind episode. of an episode behind. So what's going to happen is, in order for us to finish, we'll just like I'll just watch the last one again with you, and then we'll 
Four hours, people say. It's four hours. Four hours, yeah. Four hours, four parts. Well, we'll break it down an hour at a time. Yeah, and I would watch the whole thing. Meredith can't do it, so. Uh, I'm not doing anything for four hours. Yeah. I barely, I'm, well, I was going to say, unless I'm at the barn. I don't even know if I'm at the barn for four hours. So. There is a uh, Winter Soldier Falcon show coming. I feel like I'm like I'm advertising, you know, Marvel. Marvel Whatever, stuff. I don't care. I'm very, very excited about it. That one I'm looking forward to. Eric says, "No one of Vision spoilers in the chat, please." Agreed. Yeah. Don't spoil it for me. Meredith does need a spa day, past Master Dan. I don't have time for spa day. I need sleep. I need a day I can sleep too. I feel like I'm drawing a bit of a, a weird thing. Like he looks a little off. I don't know. Maybe because I'm drawing. Maybe got back. Yeah. I've been drawing a lot of backs lately. I'm getting I'm better at it. Some applause. Hi. Baby got back. Yeah. Baby You're got applauding back. your own comments. That's why. I'm applauding baby's back. No, you do whatever I want. <laughs> I'm in charge of the sound deck. All right. I put it over there. You did. I'm going to have to like figure out how to download sound effects. Actually, I could, that I could tell you. I've got a membership to a place I haven't been to in six months. Let's Perfect. Oh, oh, yeah. Greg L says, Merit, that was more of a rim shot moment. Okay, here we go. I forgot I had a rim shot. So we can all blame that rim shot on Greg. And now <laughs> Greg got the rim shot. <clears throat> Henry Jeremick says, Meredith, you'll be all right when you visit Chores's. Hopefully. Oh, you will be. I will be. I'll be less tired too. You do that tomorrow? I am going to go tomorrow. That's good. I'm not going to ride anybody, but. At least you'll be out of here. Go out. I mean, enjoying your horses. <laughs> Wait a second, there's a laughter. <laughs> I will be out of here. Dave, Kevin Mandevil has a super chat for $9.99. Kevin says, David, who's your favorite Fantastic Four artist of all time and why? And Meredith, who are some of your favorite comic book writers? I want to answer that question, except my brain is not working. Scott Snyder. Yeah. Um, Kevin... Smith because he wrote that Daredevil book I really liked. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mar Marjorie, well, it's the image one that I really liked. I can't remember it. No, I didn't read it, so I don't know. I know, I can't remember. My brain's not working. Dave, you answer. Who are your favorite Fantastic Four artists of all time and why? Uh, my favorite is Arthur Adams. Uh, in terms of like artists that have drawn the Fantastic Four. Um, my favorite artist that, you know, is really known for, for Fantastic Four is John Byrne. You know, how could it not be though? And there are others too. I mean, there are a lot of great artists that um, that have done it. Michael Ringo, you know, um, but yeah, I would say John Byrne. And really John Byrne, I, I'm more of a fan of his work from uh, X-Men by far, but Cool. Corey Hudson has a super chat for $5. Corey says, advice for maintaining energy, sleep, and dynamism, dy dynamism, dynamism. Yes. From loose, sketchy drawings in the next phase of line selection refinement. Sometimes stiff doing this. Like his sketches are, have lots of, are very dynamic. Right. Okay. And energetic, but then he loses it. Yes. As he tightens it okay so i'm gonna draw a, a, gets tight as he tightens it yeah and so you draw a sketch and you've got like this great you know kind of a line and it's like it's got some you know dynamic kind of you know zip to it because you did it quickly and then when you go to draw it I'll lighten it down and then i'm gonna go ahead and you know kind of create something out of it and it can lose something you know you can kind of lose your shape. Now, I don't think I did too badly there, but really 
I want to make sure that I have a flow that runs all the way through here because that's what made that kind of dynamic in the first place. And then I, I feel like I kind of I like that too. I think that that worked, but listen to me, I don't like what I did. But um, ways that you can really lose it is is this that can definitely happen um here's my problem the truth is i've been doing this for so long i i do stuff that's stiff all the time but to try to replicate it on command hard so um and the other reason and i i did a video my last video was on for shortening and a big reason why sketches will start to fall apart is uh when like i'm gonna draw here's a my shoulder my lower arm my arm my uh, upper arm whatever you know what i mean and here it all is and if i and it's all coming toward me so it's coming out off the page too excuse me here let me just move this down so it's coming out this way um and that's my sketch now if i when i draw it uh overlap this over this and this over this and this over this and do it all wrong it's going to completely flatten out and you won't know why and i did this let me lift it i'm off the page that way i did this uh in the video i think a much better example in the last video so i would check that out but really it you need to consider your forms when you're doing your tight drawing and so my forearm is in front of my upper arm so i'm going to overlap that and then this actually overlaps over here but i really want to make sure to accentuate that this is in front of it so i'm going to do this i'm always going to overlap the things that are in the front over the things that are in the back and that's always going to give me uh the the look that i'm looking for like it's going to give me it's going to make sure that my shapes have a consistent direction and that will keep your figures much more dynamic uh, in the, the final rendering phase, that's a big thing that can cause it to get stiff. But the, the other thing really is just making sure to have a, a gestural flow to your line. So, you know, you draw the inside of, like, here's, I'm running out of room. Let me zoom out. And then I'll just zoom back in. Okay, so I've got legs. I've got one here. Here's another leg here. And here's my back leg like this. And, you know, here's my pelvis. And I've got like an overall shape like this that I've drawn between the legs. Here's one foot and here's the other one. And that kind of a shape language where it's really simple like that is what can give your figure a lot of um, flow. And you really want to think in terms of even when you're drawing your final drawing on there and tightening it up, you want to really make sure to think in terms of your broad overall shapes and keep that flow. If you lose that, you'll also stiffen up a little bit. Apparently, when I yawned, yeah. I made other people yawn. Huh. Rike Inglés one two three says it took him two months to recover mentally from his move. Oh, geez, yeah, yeah. You know what, Rike? Uh, I highly recommend having a live stream. <laughs> you know, because really, it's it's amazing how you feel like you're kind of home when you connect with so many people again. It's like I haven't left you guys behind with the old house. It makes it easier to let go. Brad Scott Art has a super chat for $10. Brad says, thank you for your time. And MMR, which is Miss Meredith Rocks. I know that. Wow. Thank you, Brad. Yes, thank you very much, Brad. Claudio has another super chat for $5. Claudio says, you are a fan of Libra Mayhew Dave. His art comes off looking really dirty all the time, but it works really well for someone like Batman. Is that just me? Um, well, he has a very uh, interesting original kind of a style. It's it's like tiles of of shapes. And yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of, of what he does. I think it's it's absolutely <laughs> incredible. And I do think it works for darker characters better. Uh, generally speaking, my favorite artists tend to be a little darker. Not always, you know, um, but generally. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a very big fan. And I also would venture to say that Lieber Mayho could draw any book and make it work. So, yeah, it works for Batman. 
if he was to do like Fantastic Four, for instance, it would be a very dark Lieber Mayhem Fantastic Four, but I think it would be awesome. It would just be a different feel. Vegas Dave says it took me a year to recover from my move, but it was more acknowledging I bought my first house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Responsibility. Yeah. Adam Hilton says we moved into our new place just over a month ago, but had to move twice within six weeks. Oh my gosh, shoot uh, me. Shoot. Kill me now. Yeah. Rike Inglés123 says, I have a live stream, Dave. It's called Monday Night Draw. Ah, see, there you go. You got us. And Sheldon's off to go to the store. Ah, uh, well. Couldn't last. Bye, Sheldon. What time are we at? Don't know. Yeah, I'm doing great. We'll be fine. We'll be done by 10. Promise? I promise. Promise, promise. Promise, promise, promise. Because if not, can you guess what button I hit? Um, no. You're going to heaven. The harp. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Henry Jeremick says I had to label the buttons and then it'll be all fine. No, I like that it doesn't work, Henry. <laughs> That's part of my charm. If it was all coordinated and smooth, then it wouldn't be part of the Meredith and Dave show. You can get like the, the site. Motion Ray, I think, is the site. Anyway, um, they have thousands of different sound effects. They have like, you know, 50 different fart sounds. So, you know. Yeah. Well, is your name Isaac? <laughs> I was really thinking I wanted to. Because I'm going to pick a fart sound. I, I wanted to get one of those and put it on there, and then I just never got around to it. So you should be glad well, maybe I was I will too busy. Pick a fart sound then. Just for that. Yeah. What do you want? I mean, I can't, I can't see myself pushing a fart sound. <laughs> but it'll be in your arsenal. But it could be in my arsenal. You know what? I could see myself getting one of the raspberry sounds. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> Okay, thanks. I don't need to get the raspberry sound though. Or the fart sound, because that was pretty I don't cool. need it because <laughs> I can good. do it myself. I'm gonna be gagless as somehow I knew it was leading to that. <laughs> I don't know if that's all. what he meant, but it worked out well. I pick and choose the comments I read when I read them. I'm Claudio has another it's... comment. He wants yeah. to know when are you gonna draw Conan the Barbarian? Thank you for the, all the super chats tonight, Claudio. Yes, thank you, Claudio. And I want to say inexplicably. I you, it's Claudio, I think. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's okay. not. Claudio. Claudio. Inexplicably, I don't know why Conan has been requested, but very recently it wasn't like an early request, and I would have thought, oh yeah, that'd be you know right away. Uh, he just kind of slipped through the cracks. So yeah, I'm gonna do it for sure. But it'll be just a little bit. I've got got a bunch that I've got to do. Everybody is asking for fart sounds. Kevin <laughs> P. West says her arse anel. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Instead of coughing, I'll just hit the fart button every time. <laughs> Kevin P. West, comment of the night. Your arse anel. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Jamie Martin, save me with your super chat. Hi, Finches. So glad you guys are back. I'm drawing along. Making these lighting choices on the thing makes me want to lie down. Kudos to you, Dave. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Oh, I feel like I need Jeopardy music, too. I need, like, some ambient music for when nobody's saying anything. And they can just, like, play in the background. Right. Do By do nobody, do. you mean you. you. It's your job to be. Do, 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 do. I'm just making up some music while okay. I read through the okay. chat. Okay. I can't even mute you anymore. <laughs> I know. That's the best part. You can't. I don't. Where's the mute button? Is it on here? If I want to mute you, how See the you? Along the bottom, there's yeah. a row of green and red buttons. Which one are it's you? It's the red button. I'm the first one. You're the second one. You're this one? Just mute you. I can mute you now. I wouldn't though. It's so rude. <laughs> you just did. But I did it for fun. Like I was right. playing with the button, not because I was muting you. Like you would mute me. 
Yeah. So rude. I think everybody would agree that. Actually, you know what? When I'm going to use that mute button, when you won't stop talking about the book of the week. <laughs> well, you um, win this week. There's no book of the week. I know. I did win this week. Come on, Patches. Go find another mouse. Hopefully, there's no more mice to find. Hopefully. We said like, t- <laughs> we went to Home Depot and I bought like eight mouse traps. And I put them all out. We only caught one though. So that's good. They say you catch the most the first night. So maybe there's just the two of them. It's too early for them to be breeding because it's still winter time. Crayfish Forever has a super chat for $10. And in case you're wondering, I do not live catch and release because I I don't want them back. Yeah, we're in the country. We're in the country. It's a real deal here, folks. Yeah. I mean, I just fed a hawk. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm the circle of life person. Somebody, yeah. I gave that, I didn't put it in the garbage. I gave it back to God. I put it in, I made David put it out in the, in the field. It's fertilizer. Hey, Dave and Meredith. This is Crayfish Forever in case you forgot with his $10 super chat. Hey, Dave and Meredith. Congrats on the move. Have you tried? Cure take Zig white brush pen. Cure take. <coughs> Cure take. Zig bright white brush pen. It's like the Pentel brush you're using, but white paint. I got it and immediately thought of thought you might dig it. No, I never had. Let me write that down really quickly. So Kuretake. it's I know how to say it. Kure. Zig. Hold white on, hold on. Brush pen. Zig. I'm gonna give it a try. See, and now you guys all know if you've been watching. I use the Uniposca which I turn upside down every time. And this is great because it's um, it's like a paint. And so it has better coverage and um, I can rework it. I, I can put it down and do any of my inks over it, which I can't do with most. And I bet you that I probably can't do it with the Kiritake Zig white brush pen. But what I can't do with this is get a nice brush stroke out of it. I can get, you know, some yeah, decent so brush pen might work. So yeah, I'm gonna give my it a legs try. are going numb. Oh, and it's International Women's Day, so it is. Yes, it is. So happy International Women's Day to all the women on the stream from amateur artists, and I think somebody else commented on it too. So. Yeah. For all the people that commented on it, thank you, and for all the women on the stream, happy International Women's Day. Absolutely. Although in my family, every day is Women's Day. Right, Dave. Yes. Right, Dave. Yes. That's right. Otherwise. <laughs> button i pushed there um no that was a scary button okay <laughs> every day is women's day i don't know what happened i got kicked out of the stream you did i did you know what happened you kicked me out of the stream karma i did say you were banned early yeah. on Vegas Dave said, don't let Patches out. The Hawks might grab her. Don't you worry. Patches is not going out of the house. Yeah, and that's she a is very not real. A, she is, I said that at the very beginning when we moved out here. I said, Patches can never again go outside because the Hawks will grab her. Well, I can't believe she caught a mouse. I mean, I would have said that cat couldn't, you know. She used to be like, catch food before in Before we got her, she lived a rough life on the street. She and has I, those, like, I know. she's got those skills. Yeah, I forget that. Yeah. I forget, we didn't get her from a, we got her. We didn't get her from home. She showed up at a doorstep. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she was a thin cat, and we yeah. got her. All right, everybody's supporting my decision. They die in the wild anyway. Somebody said, because I didn't <coughs> catch and release the mouse. What's the lifespan of a mouse anyway? Oh man, let's not start. You know. Stephen King super chat. I'm moving on. Steve King. Steve King. Yes, yeah, Steve King super chat. Five dollars. Thank you. I revisited your one point perspective videos this past weekend. Any chance we'll get an in-depth two or three point perspective tutorial in the future? Yes, absolutely. I, I want to say <laughs> that video, I thought, oh, it's going to do really well. And it didn't do that well comparatively. And so I, I haven't done the other one. Like, and yeah, you know, how many times do I say I want the videos to be as useful as possible for people and whatever. But then I do look at views and I'm like, ah, I don't know, it didn't do that well. But it, the problem is it's so important. It's such a, an integral part. And I need to just suck it up and say, OK, it's not going to be for everyone. But for the people that that uh, are interested, I think that kind of thing is so valuable. I will do it. Coming up very, very soon. I just have to read this. 
muscular sphincter, that's his name, says, I have a cat that's killed seven adult possums. Are you sure you have, you don't have a tiger? Wow. Oh, that's a fierce cat. Yeah. That must be like one of those big Maine Coon cats. Patches is, I don't think she could take a possum on. She's a tiny cat. Yeah. But That's pretty right. impressive. That's pretty impressive. All right. We're at 687 likes right now. Hey, that's with great. 15 minutes to go. Let's see if we can make 700 before you finish. You say 15 minutes, probably a little bit. Maybe. No. You told me 10. Yeah, I know. You told me 10. All right. And, and Claudio has another super chat. Claudio for $5. Claudio says, you in the countryside of Canada, what does it look like? I always assumed it looks like Virginia, where I'm from, just open fields and tons of trees. We are in Essex County. And Essex County is very flat. It's like flat. It's I want to say it's like the prairies, but it's not. It's it's farmland. It's farmland cut with trees. Like there'll be a line of trees, and the trees delineate the field. Right. So you don't see as far as you would in the prairie. Right. But so like we have thirty acres, and there's trees around three sides of our thirty acres or bush, like scrubby stuff, not like big oak trees, but scrubby tree like a bush line. And then the kind of trees nobody would plant on purpose. Right. The the property behind us has like a line of oak trees, which is beautiful. Yeah, it really is. <coughs> so <coughs> Patches has got street cred now. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to find somebody says says that. Oh, past it was past Master Dan patches a cat with street cred and an autobiography, and then somebody else says, "I'm oh Rike says I'm just imagining patches being part of a gang." Yeah. Oh, we already have seven hundred and ten likes. How did that happen? I close. I look away for two minutes. Guys are the best. Rike wanted to know what the book of the week was. Rike, they're all in boxes, so there was no book of the week. There will be next week, yeah. Sorry about that, but it really would have been me just, you know, finding anything just to put it up, and I didn't want to just do that. And, and well, okay, it's that, and the fact that uh, getting set up was uh, my whole setup is different right now. I know it doesn't look that different, you know, looking at it, it's but it's significantly different. It's very different, and I, it took a little bit of figuring and trying to get everything to work together and. It wasn't as hard as it was starting because um, electronically everything, you know, all the stuff works on the computer. I didn't have to worry about, you know, making sure my camera syncs with the computer. I knew it would it's just getting it set up. And as it is, it's not an ideal spot. You can see I'm, I'm looking right through my other camera at that camera. So I'm going to need to do something about that. But for now... I generally figure, uh, you know, my face is, is not really our marquee selling point on this thing. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's why I watch. Right. See your handsome visage. Visage. Paul Pratt has a super chat for $5. Paul says, I'm a former artist that hasn't drawn for nearly a decade. It's too long. Where would you recommend I start? If I wanted to begin again, um, I okay. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, get how to draw comics from Marvel way. I know you're an artist, but it's such a great book, and it's it really, uh, yeah. I I feel a little ridiculous recommending it to somebody that is an artist. So you know what you're doing, but it's such a great review. And uh, I, I think just, you know, going through some of those shapes, like some of the simple shapes, as simple as they are, and as much as you, you understand them, just get a feel for them again, just drawing shapes in space and just, you know, getting comfortable. And I, I say that actually mostly just because what you don't want to do is say, I'm a former artist. I know what I'm doing. Now I'm going to sit down and do this and I'm struggling and you start to freeze up and then you decide you don't want to do it. So, you know, just relax and, and just uh, sketch some simple things, just, you know, gestural sketches, that kind of thing. Um, and just enjoy that. And then, you know, um, it's, you know, anatomy, you want to brush that up. Uh, remember what you've forgotten, maybe learn some new things. 
Um, I want to do this is actually something I actually I, I just watched last week a video on animal anatomy. Um, I think it was a Marshall. I need to put a link up. It was really good. And at one point in it, he was talking about how useless anatomy books are for learning anatomy. And I've been kind of saying that for a while, but not in the first of all, not as strongly as he did. Um, but also not as uh, clearly like exactly why they're so bad for anatomy and they are so bad for anatomy because you um when you look at an anatomy book it doesn't differentiate between the big broad muscles that actually define form like you know your big deltoid that's a big shape that you really see on the outside of the body and it's you know it's apparent and it's a landmark that you know in your pecs and like the big this is what you need to think about when you think about anatomy is your big broad muscle shapes first and then you can worry about the little ribbons of you know the little detail and that kind of thing but it's it comes down to the big blocky shapes and when you look at anatomy books they don't differentiate between those shapes and super wafer thin can't even see them underneath the skin kind of fascia and that kind of thing and they'll put all that in there and it just makes it utterly confusing and you'll end up with you know a lot of problems from that so i don't recommend anatomy books for that reason i do recommend them but you, you need to use them in conjunction with with other tools um i think uh, uh i always recommend george bridgman um andrew loomis his stuff is is all online uh for free um uh bart sears has has some really great tutorial stuff on anatomy Actually, um, Robert Marzullo, who was just here earlier, has a whole uh, an anatomy series, like an extensive long one that he's he's been uh, just coming out with lately. It's been doing really, really well. Uh, I'd give that a try. And he is a phenomenal teacher. And he's just so likable, you know, like I could just listen to him. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd give his his uh, videos a shot, too. And, uh, you know, take it from there. And it's kind of one thing at a time. I would say, you know. Uh, depending on where you are with your art, and this is the thing I don't really know, so I'm I'm just kind of talking <laughs> into the void a little bit. Apologies, but um, I'm talking in the void, you're just talking. Am I supposed to interrupt you? Nope. I'm going to say one more thing, and then you can. Okay. Um, talking in the void, like you're implying that I'm not doing my job, but you're uh, just I'm just you roll rambling on. <laughs> it had nothing to do with Meredith. <coughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with you, but. Oh yeah, you want the void? Here we go. What was that? Crickets. Oh man. Okay. Really, Meredith, it had nothing to do with you. <laughs> um, That's the problem is I tuned out and all I heard was you say talking in the void. Uh, and I was like, <gasps> you know that like I'm yeah. falling asleep on the couch moment as I am falling asleep on the couch moment. Keep going. Uh, right. One yeah. More thing to say. Work on pinups and, and pages and that kind of thing um, also. But make sure, no matter where you are, if you're starting, it's. It, I think it's still useful to do that. But you can't just do that. You can't just draw pinup figures. You really have to work on studies, which is what we're going to be doing in in two days, um, on Wednesday for the the member stream, which will be a lot of fun. Cool, Leo. And the member streams will be a little bit more regular now that we actually have a house again. So you know, there's, there's a bit of a gap there. There is some kind of Conan thing going on in the stream right now. Okay. Conan, the Hitta Balarian, Conan from Afghanistan, Conan the Charlatan. These aren't the, the best ones. Conan the Conan the Ball Berrigan. Oh, I'm reading them all. Conan the Mandalorian, Conan the Subscribitarian, <laughs> Conan the Like Aryan, Conan the Republican. I like the Conan the Mandalorian. Yeah, I yeah. like the Conan the su subscriber Aryan or Conan the historian. You know what? That's something. I know what's going on in the stream right now, but I always love there's like Conan the yeah. Confucian. <laughs> something I should do for a stream sometime is like two different characters and do like a backup. <coughs> That'd be a lot of fun. That seems like the kind of thing you can get like a million views on YouTube. Doing this what? character and that character mashup. I'm sorry, what? what? Nothing. I'm really paying attention. Yeah, I was no, reading okay. all the Conan, the pedi pe pediatrician, Conan, the Unitarian, Conan, the Canadian, <laughs> Conan, the librarian, Conan, you said that one. the Meridarian. Uh, okay. 
what the heck is a Meridarian? Meredith. Mer oh, Mer right. Okay. Meridarian. Conan the Conanian. <laughs> Conan the O'Brien. Oh dear, we we've devolved. We've we've just lost it all. It's not even ten o'clock. <laughs> I'm laughing. I got five minutes. I need to. Leave the rocks alone. I, I can you, really when you talk, does it over go over top of the sound effect? Um, it, it mixes together, so it's yes, it like the sound effect doesn't block the other channels. Okay, and I have it turned down. The sound effects is right here. You can see the low, the level is just a little lower than speech, so, oh, so I could turn down a little more, even. Yeah, you could turn it down Probably more, probably turn it down a little more, or just not use them, you know, it's always an option. Same. No, I'm not going to not use them. Why buy? You bought this soundboard. You're like, I got all these sound effects. And then you never use them. Well, someone's going to use them and it's going to be me. Yep. Are you having more fun with the stream now that you have sound? You have control over the sound? I'm delirious right now. So, so <laughs> no. Uh... I got a cover. I still need to finish tonight. Fun times. As soon as this is done. I apologize. And I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to wait. I'll scan this next week when it's finished. So um, that saves me from having to scan tonight. And I really do. Uh, I've got so much work I got to do. So um, as soon as I'm done with this, I'll probably be up till two o'clock in the morning finishing that thing. I wouldn't even be able to finish tonight. Though. Oh, the cover? Yeah. But then why stay up in the morning? Why not just get up in the morning? Because I need to get it done. I will lose my mind. Like I, I need to get it done. Paul Pratt has a super chat for $2. Paul says, thank you for the incredibly thoughtful response. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I do my best. I just don't know. You know. Kevin P. West says, Meredith the Dictarian is an, a dictator. Right. Yeah, I am. I'm a mom. Moms are dictators. Otherwise, Otherwise. kids don't brush their teeth or go to bed. Or eat their vegetables. Otherwise, they'll sit and play Fortnite instead of taking the dogs out That's for a right. walk. Well, hopefully, I can pick them. They seem quiet, so. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I didn't walk the dogs once today. It's crazy. You did not. BW has a super chat for four and nine. BW says, missed you, Finch fam. I've been out of the loop for a minute, so what's this all about a membership? Cool kids stream on Wednesday. Hearts and Gene Simmons. <laughs> first of all you're the cool kids so you know we are definitely not the cool kids um it, all the the membership stream is is um oh man and there's another thing so look i've got another tutorial coming out uh well i'm going to be recording it tomorrow and this is part of the reason why i want to stay up and get that covered i'm hoping actually to get it done if i can tonight um and uh i always record quite a bit more than i end up putting on YouTube because I can't put at a, uh, you know, 45 to an hour long video on YouTube without it really underperforming. It's just a you know, it's fact. So um, anyway, put that up for memberships. And then we also do um, like art streams. I, I, I would love to do something that's a little bit more, you know, focused, like drawing for that from Frazetta, that kind of thing. Um, or, you know, uh, art reviews, but it's, it's not really, the ideal format for this stream. This is more of a, you know, we're having fun and we're hanging out. And so, yeah, that's, that's really what it is. All right. Super chat. Is that you done? Nope. But I got two minutes to put more detail in. I'm just going to rush through some thin line detail. And hope Tagmo for the best. model works has a super chat for $2 with no comment. Thank you. Tag. Yeah. Thank you. Tag. He must have a comment. <laughs> no comment. Kevin P. West says, Meredith, please get some good rest and take care of that cough. I do want to go to sleep tonight. I don't want to wake up. The problem is I get up very early in the morning. Like sometimes I wake up at 2.30. Sometimes I wake up at 4. Yeah. Sometimes 5. I don't have a consistent waking up time, which is very sucky. Yep. What time did you get up this morning? I want to say like 5.30, 5, 5.30, something like that. Yeah, for you it's not too bad. I was up at 8.30, my usual time. Tag says, how do you tell Meredith is tired? It's 8 p.m. It's so true. <laughs> you have no idea how many nights I pass out on the couch at 7.30. Yeah, it's true. And I really, I wake up consistently at 8.30. 
because I have an alarm clock called a wife who <sighs> let me sleep in past then. That's right. And I, even if I wake up early, I'll just lay there and just soak it in until somebody goes, David, I mean, up. And she makes coffee. Every day I make Every coffee. Day, which I do appreciate. Even, and I never even say any, like, I don't even say thank you. That's how it goes, you know. The first time you do something for someone, they're like, oh, wow, that's so nice. Thank you. And then after a week, it's just expected. And you Honestly, don't even, if I don't make you coffee, you get Then grumpy. I get grumpy. I know. But I do appreciate it. I really well, do. I'm happy to do it. Christopher Twin has super chat for $5. Christopher says, great job today. Drawing along is very motivational. Oh, well, thank you, Christopher. This is a different one. I'll say that. You know, drawing somebody from behind. I have not done that <laughs> on a stream. You know, I'm always drawing. So this is my first, I guess, back, really. So that's kind of cool. You know, he's got no head, though. I mean, he's got a head, but no face. Amateur Artist 1505 says, so happy there's a stream today. I chose to miss the All-Star game yesterday to watch this. So worth it. Way better than school. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here again. All right. I'm going to say it's 10 o'clock, but I'm starting to get a little bit of a tired fatigue headache. It's 10 o'clock. Okay, I know it's 10 o'clock. All right. I pushed through. You did. I am truthfully not done. Dang it. But you know what? The thing takes longer than than uh, Dr. Doom because of all the rocks. So let me zoom out. He's not done and he's going to end up having to be done next week, but I'll be able to get uh, Dr. Doom done a little faster. He's got a lot more shadow and uh, <laughs> you know what's going to end up happening next week. If I can't get Dr. Doom done in time, you'll, you'll end up just going to bed and I'll, I'll be here for another hour finishing. I'll just, we'll all stay here and it'll just turn into a very unentertaining stream, but at least you'll see it finished. There you go. All right. Well, all that's going to be it for this time. Thank you guys for coming. And bearing with our fatigue. <laughs> well, Meredith, I'm fine. I feel good. Pumped. Bad. All right. Well, I'm sure you guys are all tired too. Uh, so everyone have a great week. Thanks again so much for coming and spending time with us again. Uh, after a week of not doing this, I was really looking forward to it. So yeah, I'll see uh, some of you guys on, on Wednesday. The next tutorial will be out just as soon as I can get it out. I'll be drawing it tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you guys next Monday for oh, our next artsy lives. Bible nerd said, Don't forget the garbage. Garbage is now Sunday night. Yeah, I did that yesterday. Yep, as a job, it's a yep. long way down the driveway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All <laughs> right, wheelbarrow. Yeah, I, yeah, I would have been. I, I need to find the okay. Here we go. All right, good night, <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Guys. Good night, Lance Deboye.